So the material that we're using, that red material that you see there, that's called all fair, okay? And what it is, is a 50-50 mix. So you have a Roman hardener. See. The red is the hardener, and then you have white is the uh, the, uh, the compound, the, uh, the fairing compound. So what he's gonna do is it's a 50-50 mix. And this is something that doesn't dry fast. It will not dry till tomorrow. This is something you apply and you gotta walk away from it. But you're gonna show it. Remember, the same thing, when you mix the two together, they have to be one solid color, not a swirl. You don't want swirls in it. 50-50. 50% hardener, 50% of the fairing compound. See how it's not mixed 100% yet? You can see swirls. So now he's taping the edges to protect the edges so we don't lose the edges. He's putting tape now. We kind of jumped the gun and didn't put the tape down quick enough, but we cleaned it and now we're putting the tape so we can redo it. You can see how the tape protects the areas. And now you have to sand them. The good thing when the mistake we made, this stuff doesn't dry right away. It takes 24 hours to dry. Or a little bit less than 24 hours. But it takes the time for it to dry. Carlitos was explaining when you start the, the bucket to get the radius, you start at the very end. Because if you start in the middle, then you're going to have indentation. So you start from the end and you work your way all the way to the front. Remember, that was only the first one. We've got to do another one to be. So when, you, when you're making the fixing, like these pieces, uh, when you do, when you to fare it all in, you, ha you can't just fare a section. You've got to fare the whole thing. It's just so that, like, the, the problem is from here to here, and there's really the only problem, a couple problems, you got to do the whole thing to make it even. That's the only way you're going to make it completely even. Now this is the second one. Compression. With pressure. Like this, I don't know if you can see it with the light, but you see how it curves. So now he's taking all the excess out of the middle. So now, now you can really see, you can really see the curvature. And when we sand it, and tomorrow we're gonna prime it, and it'll be perfect. Basically, we cleaned everything down with 50% acetone and 50% uh, water. And so basically, going back to this, so now we're ready, is we're preparing, just like you've seen previous videos, uh, that we do four to one to one, uh, when it was do the primer, so he made the level here to four, and now he's adding the second part, and then he'll add the other part, and then we'll put it in the gun. So now we're gonna do reducer. So we're gonna do one part of the reducer. And now the next part will be the hardener. The hardener here. Sorry, I didn't realize it's in the light. So now he's gonna put the hardener in. And 
there we are at our mark. So now we'll mix it up and get ready to spray and you'll see that in the next video. So from the previous video seeing that we painted the boat uh, with a primer, we put uh, three coats of primer. Uh, so now uh, Carlito basically took acetone, 50% acetone, 50% uh, dye, and we hit the whole surface. He taped off first, and he hit it. This is what it looked like when it was painted, so you see the difference in color. So there, that way you can see, now we're gonna block sand it. When we block sand it, we're looking for all the little defects that was missed from before because that's why we had to paint it. It was just too many different colors and it was hard to distinguish uh, which was bad and which was not. Now you see these little holes there, that's because there was water and moisture. But uh, we'll resolve that, this is just for uh, filler. All the scratches are pretty much filled up. You can see the little defects. And then we're gonna modify this as well. This will be modified. We're gonna make this integrate all together as one, and this will disappear. Our intention was to put a light there, but they don't make a light small enough, so we're modifying it. So we just wanted you to see before we start block sanding it. So here, he made, here's the block sanding. He made this piece. He cut pieces of uh, sandpaper, so that way we can sand it. So we're gonna show you how Kalita starts off the block sand. He's not pushing hard, he's just slightly hitting it. And you can see how it's leaving the marks. And once all the blue goes away and it's all white, then there'll be blue spots and those are the spots that we have to correct. And now he goes the opposite direction. Before he did one direction, now he's going the opposite direction. That way we take it off the evenly. And you can see the scratches, but remember, we're taking layers off at a time and eventually it'll be all white. And then we go in the opposite direction again. If you go in the same direction, what happens is you create grooves. And we're trying to prevent to make more work for ourselves, so we're doing it in the right way. Yeah, and see, since, it, since it's cured, the, the paint, the paint, uh, the primer's cured, you can see there's not, it's not sticking to the sandpaper, so it's cured properly. If it wasn't cured, what happens, you would see blotches on here, and then that, the paint would be sticking, it would be taking too much material off. That's why uh, when you're doing fiberglass or building anything with materials like this, uh, what happens is you have to have patience. Now, we kept one piece. This is what happens when it's not dry. This is when the paint's dry. So you can see the difference between the dry paint, nothing stays on here with a primer, and then when something's not dry, it sticks to the same paper. We just wanted to show you the difference so you understand it. So here we're doing the modifications that you've seen in previous videos. There was a hole there that was made for a light, but unfortunately we're not gonna get a light that fits it. So now so we wanna make this come like this, and then we're gonna shave this to make it blend in with that. So we have to get this so it follows through and it touches right there. So that's the space that needs to be filled. And then once it's filled, then we make this so it lands flush with this. So if you notice, he has the tape on the wood, so that way the wood can come right off uh, when he takes it, once it hardens a little bit. We gotta let it harden a little bit. 
this radius here, this here, this surface area is going to stay the same. It's, we're just making the design for the V to come to integrate to here. And then from here, we're going to make this integrate to here. So you're going to see this process now. The weather plays a huge part when it comes to this. Normally this would be dry by now, but because the temperature is a little bit cooler, it takes a little harder to, uh, to kick. So as you see, as he touches it with his finger, he wants it somewhat a little bit tacky. So when he peels the tape off, it'll show its form. Then once he pulls that off, then he'll take the residue because it's not cured 100%. Cut the edges to find the edges. So it's starting to harden up. We're just waiting a little bit more. This is like a waiting process. So now it's pretty much starting to get tacky. We're gonna let it see a little bit more, but now we don't have to put pressure anymore. And again, so we got rid of the hole, extended this part out. So it integrates to about here. And then now once we have that, then we'll integrate this part to come here. So you see he's already cutting the edges off. So it doesn't get too hard and he peels it off. There you go. It's not perfect now, but this you got a way to cure it. We sand it, but you see how, how much we extended it to here. And now that, that he's going to start sanding it now. Here now is the transition. Still needs to put a little more, but this is just the transition part to get our to get our lines. So you see the transition coming from here, sharp, to its original form, and it comes and it smooths out. So now we're taping the sides so we can make the edges properly. So this is the extension that we added. To get, remember the hole, there was a hole here for a light for the future, but unfortunately it didn't work. So now we're making the edges so we can keep the form so we can correct all that. This was originally 77, and now he's gonna use Evercoat with a different color. So the Evercoat, the reason we're using the Evercoat, so that way, because it dries quickly. We're having some issues with some temperatures here, so we're trying to resolve this. Temperature plays a factor when you're putting the hardeners in. The colder it is, the more hardener you need, and the hotter it is, the less hardener you use. Now he's going to make his edges, correct the edges, and then we made the flat part, now we're going to put here, this one in, and our tape is the guide. And remember, the P77 is for building up, and uh, the Evercoat is like the finish epoxy. 